little bit about um, what that was like and what you learned there. Yeah, it was traumatizing. You know, I still, I still am traumatized from it. Um, I wake up sometimes, I don't know where I am. Uh, I mean, well, I don't even know where to begin. You know, I don't even know where to begin. It was, it was very scary and, uh, you know, yeah, I, I don't even know where to begin. I mean, the, all the time in isolation, I was in isolation for a very long time, almost a year. It was a year by myself. Like totally alone? Yeah, totally alone. Like, but they, and they, it, it broke up. So well, it, the first, when I first got there, I was there in isolation for like six months. Totally alone by myself in a cell. Uh, you get one hour out to make a phone call or to take a shower and then you are to go back. I had no books. I had nothing. One person sent me a Bible, which was really nice, a fan from Sweden. <laughs> and um, I was like that for six months. And then from there, they uh, I got sentenced. And then they put me into the federal system. And then I went into a federal jail. But there you were also, I had a cellmate at that point, but you're also locked in. You're locked in for 23 hours, like 20 oh. hours a day at that time. Were other prisoners aware of why you were there and your history? When I first got to the county, yes. Ugh. People knew who I was, who I was, and uh, the dark people were very upset about it. And uh, they would go ahead and like when I would come out for my hour for the for my time, you know, they would shout things at me that they were going to kill me, that they were going to uh, cut my head off, that they were going to stab me, that uh, if I ever went to general population, I'm dead. And that uh, watch my back and all of this crazy shit. Like every single time that I came out, they would scream at me. Like I was on the phone, they would start screaming. And um, but then, after, but I just kind of ignored it. You know what I mean? I just, I was just, I just shook. And then after a little while, they kind of realized that I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna give them the reaction that they wanted. And then they kind of stopped. But for the, for, for at least, I don't know, I would say about four and a half months of it, it was every day, every day, every day, every day. Oh, what a nightmare. You know, they would scream. I mean, and it wasn't just them, too. It was the guards, too. The guards used to give me a really hard... Because all, all of the guards were of the African-American persuasion. And they would go ahead. And when I was in my cell... Um, so when you're when I was in that part of the isolation, you get searched three times a day. They they Once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and once in the evening. What could so you would, possibly acquire in the interim? You, you can't you can acquire things if you want to, if you want to do it. You can do it, but it's, it's, it's very difficult, you know, but you're locked in a cell. So they'll, they handcuff you. Okay. You're like they, there's like a little slot in the door. You got to walk up to the door with your hands behind your back. They handcuff you. They would pull me out of the cell. They would put the handcuffs on really tight, pull me out of the cell, slam me into the wall, slam my face into the wall. Uh, then they would proceed to go into my room. They would throw everything on the floor they would throw all of my clothes everywhere, go, throw all of my commissary, commissary everywhere, which is what they're not supposed to do any of this. I mean, they're supposed to search you, but they're not supposed to go off like this. Mm -hmm. And then they would throw me back into the cell. This happened three times every day for the first six months. And then they would, they would come in and like, they would give my food through the, through the tray, through the, the tray, through the slot. They would take it, throw it on the floor uh like push it in so it like fucking just drops and then they would do all this like they would take it and like fling it at me and like hit me with it they were they were they were pieces of garbage they were they were assholes but they knew who i was right right and uh so i got it from the guards and and the inmates and then i went to the federal system and then when i went to the federal system nobody really knew who i was good <laughs> so yeah. it was easier there it was slightly easier, you know, and then you go into the to the transit part because once you get sentenced mm -hmm. you have to be sent to prison so the transit part is really difficult. Again, you're, it's not total isolation, but it is isolation because you only have your cellmate and you run out of things to say to each other after about the third day. <laughs> so you're just sitting in there quiet. You know what I mean? Like talking about whatever. And um, you're not coming out of the cell. You're not being able to shower or not being able to call family. You know, you don't have any food, you know, and you're just sitting there. So... I went from the federal uh, jail in Miami. Then from there, they took me to Tallahassee for a day. And then from Tallahassee, I went to Atlanta, which if you've ever heard of Atlanta uh, federal prison, oh my God, that place is like something out of your fucking nightmares. 
It was horrible. I mean, locked in all the time. Uh, cockroaches and rats scurrying around everywhere, crawling on your food, crawling in your clothes. You're sleeping. Do you feel them crawling on your on your body? Uh, um, the whole thing looks like a giant castle. And like when you walk in, it's it, it feels like it feels like a like an abandoned insane asylum. Like everything is just kind of dark and metal and stone and cold. And I remember walking in. And I, I, I see when you first see the place, if you just look at the place, you will be scared out of your mind. Yeah. And I remember walking in and I'm like, oh my, I'm like, I'm going to die here. This place is I'm like, where the fuck am I going? So there was that. And then they took me from there to uh, North Carolina, then Virginia, then Philadelphia. Then I went to Fort Dix, which was my prison. <sighs> So you spent two years doing this, and mm -hmm. uh, you got out when, last month? I got out at uh, the end of January. January 31st is when I got out. How has your reintegration period been going? Well, it's it's been interesting. It's been, uh, I think, um, there's been parts of it that have been, I mean, really great. You know, people have the, the overwhelming amount of support and love that I got from everybody when I came out. I mean, I, people were writing to me all the time. I have so many fan letters that I'm gonna read eventually when I do a stream and show people. I mean, I've got like fucking like a bunch of them in there. And uh, people donating to help me get back on my feet, you know, hey James. Uh, sorry, it's my nephew, it's okay. Um, people donating to help me get back on my feet, which has helped me so much because I had legal bills and things that I had to pay and built and just it was everyone's been great everyone's been great so so far it's it's been i mean it's been really hard too because I, I come home and like i said my mom passed when i was in prison so just not be her being here has really